talking about in terms of a better and a greater world for all people. And we can't do that by me in one corner doing what I can do to hurt you and you in the other corner doing the same thing against me. So this evening I have with me um, Mr. Roney, Jaquiel Roney. Um, I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure to be sitting down speaking with him. Um, today's topic is going to be um, sarcoidosis and sickle cell. Well, it's neurosarcoidosis and sickle cell. Sickle cell. Correct, correct. So we're going to be discussing that. Um, so because we are in BATB, no beating around the bush, uh, we're not going to take up any time. We're going to go right into what we're here to dis discuss or converse about. So without further ado, Mr. Roney, can you first just tell us what sickle cell is first? It is. So sickle cell is basically a disease that um, you carry that has an in normal shaped blood cells. So in other words, your blood cells are most normal normal people are are born uh, with blood cells that are circular. Mm -hmm. Our blood cells are shaped more so more so like a a banana shape. Oh. Um, with 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 basically like like hook hook shape type banana cell. Yeah. And what happens what happens with that is that um, we carry more white blood cells than we do red blood cells. It's primarily in the African American uh, heritage and a little more, it's known to be in the uh, Latino community as well, um, but primarily it's a black disease. Even white people has gotten it, but it is very, they're like, like say for instance, a white, a white disease that a black person normally wouldn't get, for mm -hmm. instance. I'm just trying to think of what, it's, it's primarily that, you know, we prim primarily Okay. Are the okay. ones that hold the disease, right? And the enzymes, the genes, and whatnot that carries sickle cell. So that's not to say that they can't get it. It's typically like ninety-nine, I guess, percent of the time. Is that a good, right. accurate right. guess? Right, right. To where, to where, um, uh, like, um, like when I was diagnosed, for instance, I was diagnosed at the age of two, mm -hmm. and um, uh, based on what. My mother has uh, relied, relayed to me and given me the understanding as to when, when it was she found out that I actually had the disease. Mm -hmm. And of course, the disease is, is only a disease that can be transmitted through uh, a mother and a father. Okay. Of course, that, create, that comes together and creates a child. And one either had the trait both may have a trait. However, if not a trait, they have, um, uh, well, the, the flu, full-blown full disease. And again, full-blown disease is transmitted through both, um, both parents carrying a trait, at least a trait. In, in other words, um, most people who, who, who uh, carry the trait Nine times out of ten, it's, it's, they're carrying a, a C trait or an S trait. We carry more white blood cells than we do red blood cells. So, well, oh, I'm sorry. Our uh, hemoglobin count is also low. So it'll cause us to go into what you call a crisis. A crisis is something that, that occurs when, when, uh, uh, when you, let's say for instance, um, your blood cells start connecting. Uh, they start connecting and those hook type connections, they start connecting with each other and going, uh, I want to say, they start hooking, hooking onto each other and that, and then not only do they hook, they're also, they're also sticky. Our cells are sticky. so. What happens with uh, when it when it comes all of that comes together, it, it call it it transform into something that we call clotting. Okay. Which a lot of people are familiar with clotting through like maybe you get shot, 
and a blood clot. Right. Okay. And in order for them to stop the blood, they need to clot up. So they cover that spot or something like that to cause a big clot. Okay. To, to block the the flow of the blood, basically. So they Same actually reason. make it. They make the blood clot. No. Well, you're, you're talking about your, the disease itself. The disease, uh huh. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. It creates because it's, the cells are sticky. Ah. And they're hmm. hook shaped. Right. So when they connect, and then, you know, being that they stick together, it's like clot. Right. Clot, like a, kind of like a, a, a crab. Yeah. When you go to grab that crab out of the yeah, back, and they hang on each other. They hang on each other. Uh, you get so many of them, guess what? You got a cluster of crabs, right? Exactly. exactly. So you get like five or six crabs, five or six crabs that, that, are, that are forming in one cluster. Right? Okay, okay. So that's what sickle cell does. It, it forms, they, they uh, lock together and clot up. The clottage is what cause uh, what we call um, crises. Okay. The crises is, is where it, it is created most of the time in the joints. Um, you know, different, different areas of where your bone, your mm -hmm. bone connect. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be anywhere. Okay. Um, and then sometimes it could just clot into in your arteries or your your veins um, to where you know it, it start clotting up into in your in your arteries and your veins. To, it can cause issues that way as well. So all of that creates like excruciating pain. And um, with the different traits of it, um, you have different type of symptoms mm -hmm. and different types of um, this is where the S trait and the what you say that what, what did you say the two traits were or the two S -trait types and C trait S trait and so this is where the difference in the S trait and the C trait comes in so that's more of a is it does that have something to do with the pain or if that is something totally different it's still sickle cell but what's the difference no the, the difference is well both is really no difference between um, the two different uh, uh, bloodlines that you carry uh -huh. um, it's just well and well put it this way it is a difference but mm. I'm not as familiar to as to what okay what the difference really is but one um, once you got two people that come together mm. um, now let's say for instance I'm with the woman who has who has who doesn't have the trait mm -hmm. or the disease? Mm -hmm. Then nine times out of ten, my child can come out to have because I have such a heavy case of it. Mm -hmm. uh, my child can still be born with the trait, and it's a possibility they, that they can be born without nothing at all. Okay, um, but. The statistics is nine times out of ten because, like in my case, I have sickle cell disease. So nine times out of ten, in my case, if I have a bring a child into this world, nine times out of ten, that child is going to end up having at least a trait. Okay. So like right currently right now, my mm. my daughter she has the trait. Okay. But she doesn't have the full blown disease. So it's not a it's not an S and C. I'm gonna back up. I want to because I made a statement. It's not an S or C trait. It's an S or C type, or is it an S or C trait? It's just an S or C type. It's a civil right. cell. It's a, it's a type, but it's still a trait. Oh, it's still a trait. Regardless on which trait you get, uh -huh. you still have a trait. Okay. Oh so wow. Like my daughter, for instance, she mm -hmm. has a trait. Um, what blinds of traits she has, I, uh, I really don't know. Ah, I, I, I got it now. I, I actually, that's something I really need to, man, I don't know, just not think about this. Okay, okay. Years, so, so even if you know. have the trait, there's a type to that as well. Right. So, so now with you, okay, so, let me make sure I understand for everybody else too. So, if you have a one parent that has sickle cell disease, Right. And one parent that has nothing. Right. Can the child be born with the disease? Right. So no, they no, they can. Disease. So both parents have to have the trait right. for the child at to least. maybe right. At least. At least to maybe 
be born with the disease, or they right. definitely will be born. With lung disease. For, right. But they still could come up with a trait. Right. No matter what. So they may not be born, if even if both parents, parents. If one of the parents have at least a trait, uh -huh. a, the child has, that can be born between the two, Right. Can at least still carry the trait. The trait, right. right. But if both parents have the trait, it doesn't mean that the child will be born with sickle cell, but the child most likely will be born with the trait. No. At least. Nah. Nah. Okay, when so if both, both parents have both the trait. Parents, when both parents have the trait, uh -huh. you automatically gonna have oh. a you're going to have a disease. Damn. So it's kind of best if, if, you're gonna be full if Joe and Sally meet. And y'all have the trait. Your child, if y'all do it, then you are given. You kind of know that you're giving that child sickle cell. Right. You, you, you. Some people take a chance, and you know they really love each other that much, and they want to have a child together. Right. And so you know, but that's the choice that you make. Yeah. During the time of that, you know, like, and then there's, you know, you have those of us that are afraid, don't want people to know that they got these different diseases so they keep them to themselves or things of that nature or they might think that you know a girl or a dude ain't gonna like them because they know that they carry this disease or what have you so it does make dating a little a little more complicated um but a lot of people don't don't have an understanding for what it is so like in my case most of my life, I, especially if it came to a, a female, a young lady that I was going to ask you about lady. dating, like at some point. So yeah, you like you're going into dating, like you right. you went there. So well, if I see that it's going somewhere and it's a possibility, I'm really feeling this this person. Then you know, I usually bring it to the table and let it be known. Like so, when um. Two couple, two two couples come together. And you you want two people? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, yeah, one, two, two I mean, people. hey, whatever you into, shit. Right. right. So when two people come together uh -huh. who think they gonna shine together, right, right, right. things really happen. You uh -huh. get what I'm talking about? You know, like you know, you really feeling a person like in, my, in, my, in a lot of my situations. Uh, Coming to, when it comes to dating or what have you, mm -hmm. um, the thing that I usually uh, go by is whether or not I really how I'm feeling a person and <clears throat> how much I'm thinking they feel of me. And if, if one leaving, well, number one, if, <laughs> if it ain't going away, I'm strapping up. Right, right, right. right. You know what I'm saying? But, Right. If it's coming to that that point where you feel like you're gonna take that gym gym up off of that thing, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. that, that part right there, uh -huh. and you know that uh, you trying to feel some skin and mm -hmm. skin and glory. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know that's what when mean? you go and say something yeah. about. So that's where you want to have that conversation because mm -hmm. now you're knowing and playing around with the possibilities of what can transpire. This is just how serious it is for those out there who do have the disease or carry the trait or what have you. These are things that must be talked about when you are allowing yourself to get familiarized or to get into something more intimate with a person. And um, especially when you just want to get into that mode where you don't want to put no protection on, you loving each other and feeling each other. And you're really thinking about actually wanting to bring a child in the world. You got to think about what it is you're doing and to to that child, that unborn child, mm -hmm. um, when you have these symptoms. Or I mean, I'm sorry, not symptoms. When you carry these diseases and traits, mm -hmm. it's very important that you talk about it because the, at the end of the day, your unborn child is the one that's going to suffer more than of course, which you guys are already suffering. Right, right, right. Dating is hard. I mean, because you got a decision to make when you get serious with somebody, so. Uh, dating is not hard. It's just hard to let a person know yeah. once it get to that space where it really needs to be talked about. Right, right, right. Um, that's the most complicated part because a lot of people, 
even after you explain to them what it's about, if they are already familiar with it, they might say, oh, no, nah, you know, I really want to help your child. I want to take those chances, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. And you can really, at this point, really fall for somebody where they can fall for you. But and that can it's make, the most break adult it. decision to be able to say, no, nah, we already know where we're going with this. Uh -huh. And it's best for us to probably back out of this situation wow, now man. before uh, or unless we just love each other enough to just exactly. to just fight it through and and see what see what God has in store for you. Exactly. Of course, God can make anything anything possible. And so, like with me and my situations, um, I make it very clear to have that conversation. Right. Because um, with like since for instance in my case, I have the SC disease, mm -hmm. full blown. Mm -hmm. So. That's next to what you call the SS disease. SS is um, a little more. You have it's it's, a, it's they're both different mm -hmm. in their own way, mm -hmm. but SS is considered to be the worst stage. Oh, okay. It's like you got cancer. Like mm -hmm. cancer, you got stage one. Yeah, yeah. Room. One through six or uh, five, or something or another, and so when you when you have um, cancer stage two, mm -hmm. you know you might have that surgery or what have you to just remove a clot or something. Right. And you you fine, you know, um, but then you can get you can have stage four cancer and. You may not have that much long to live. Right, you right, see what right. I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So sickle cell operates kind of sort of in the same rim of it. Okay. Um, it's not as detrimental as cancer, uh, but it is a disease that, um, again, you just got to be very careful as to who you deal with because your child can come off worse. Like, I currently, right now, if I was to date a woman and she has the trait mm -hmm. along with my disease, mm -hmm. it's no doubt that nine times out of ten, my child is definitely going to, one, they definitely going to have the cake, the, the um, trait. Right. But nine times out of ten, they're probably going to have an even worse case than what I had. Wow. Which is probably going to be the SS. Why you say that? Like, what makes you say that they probably will have it worse? Will have it worse. Yeah. yeah. The reason being is because I already have the disease. Okay. And so, if their mother had the trait. Okay. And we both c come together. Uh -huh. There's, and I've not, I haven't heard a case yet, at least for people that I've met or doctors I've talked to. Who, um, of course, diagnose people every day with this disease mm -hmm. to where, um, in most cases, you come together that way. The child is nine times out of ten going to be worse. They're going to go through a lot worse situations than what you're dealing with. So when you say situations that you're dealing with, tell me some situations that you're dealing with. Okay, so like... So like I mentioned before, uh, crises, dealing with sickle cell crises. A crisis can happen anywhere from your, from your joints to uh, different type of uh, areas of your muscles. Um, and also it compromises your upper respiratory system. So like your heart and your lungs and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it can affect your breathing and all of, this, all of these kind of things. And uh, so not most of the time, like like me coming up as a kid, that was one of the reasons why my mother wouldn't allow me or to sign me up to play football, basketball, you know, sports like, like the other kids would, would be able to do, mm -hmm. you know, in the neighborhood because they just didn't want to take a chance of me already causing damage to my body. Um, based on what I've all what I already have to deal with from a day to day, so it's it's a, it's a challenging thing because 
you know, especially as a kid, because when you want to come up and you want to, man, I can do this, I can do that, or, or you're good at something, and no matter what, you know, they don't want you to play, or they don't want you to, uh, uh, they don't want to take a chance on having you participate in different activities and whatnot, because they know that um, you could easily get hurt. Um, it could cause issues with your, your breathing mm -hmm. and whatnot to the point of it, it literally can take you away from it. How that make you feel? Like they did, like we know that as a parent, or you know, you do what you feel is best right. for your child, especially in this particular situation with right. the sickle cell and knowing what it could do to you if she allowed or if they allowed you to go out and play right. sports and do some of the things that a typical child would do. Right. But how did it make you feel as a child, not knowing, looking back, thinking back, like how did that make you feel? Our uh, friends was playing football, basketball, whatever. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, your boy, he, he, he <laughs> want to court the ball and then he getting all the girls because he want to court the ball. <laughs> I'm trying to get on the court and ball right. too. Right, 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 right. And so, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, girls like it when, when, when you, you, you one of the youngins that's playing on the team, the right. school team and whatnot. Right, right, right. Makes you popular. I mean, I was popular anyway because I was just around the <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But, uh, no, no, I mean, I, I got in where I fit in. You know, I grew up in a rough city anyway, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I had to, I had to grow up tough. Mm -hmm. um, I had to, although my heart was all, my heart, I've always had a good heart. Right. I always wanted to, you know, make make other people feel happy when I'm in their presence. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so, needless to say, you know, just like I said, when you're with your your friends and your your family, who they're able to do certain activities, and mm -hmm. and they telling you, no, you can't. And join us because it's going to get rough or it's going to get bad. You know, I'm like, nah, I don't care. You know, right. let me let me get in there and let me play. Yeah. Y'all look like y'all, they see y'all having fun. I want to yeah. have fun too. Exactly, exactly. You know? um, Shit, I get and it. so, long story short, it just put me in a situation where nah, I just wasn't, I wasn't comfortable. I wasn't happy. I was, uh, in a lot of ways, I had to make myself happy in ways uh, because, um, I knew that I wasn't able to do the things that I really wanted to do, mm -hmm. um, based based on what, based on this thing that I really don't understand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is a part of me, and it's stopping me from being able to have fun. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I hated the disease. I hated. I hated anybody or anything that would turn me down for something that I wanted to do. Wow! So you even, so you even developed a hate, dislike towards people. Yeah. Underlying yeah. type of feelings for people that wouldn't allow you to. Do. Now, to this day, do those people, whoever they may be, do they know that you know? As an adult, you know the difference some now. People, some but, people do, and some people don't. Because cause oh, after a long time of building that up, because not knowing, so just think, as a child, you don't know, but no. you're still building on that dislike or hatred. Mm -hmm. And then at some point as an adult, you realize, damn, they were only making the best decision that right. if you came to terms with that. Right. that they, they, they not made those decisions. Yeah. Right now, it wouldn't probably be You wouldn't there. be here. Now, did you, from that knowing that, did you squash all that or is some of that still left, that resentment mm -hmm. in there? Because that's a lot to build up. Yeah, to well, the point where you finally understand why. Well, um, I knew. Okay, so I think a lot of us grew up with a with a edgy edgy life. You know, like edgy life, meaning, like you know, basically like I'm, I'm again. I was one who was raised in the big city of Baltimore, mm -hmm. and you know. Um, you know the neighborhoods that I grew up in. Most of the time, uh, they were they were in my in my family's eyesight. They were good neighborhoods. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which I mean, you know, I guess you could say they were good neighborhoods. But we still 
us as the kids go out and we how they playing with the, the guys and the girls that we playing with, you know. Mm -hmm. You basically you really in you was in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, um like coming up in I can remember coming up in first grade and second grade, mm -hmm. fifth grade, getting bullied. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Because of the do you believe that this was just kids being kids? Or do you believe that this has something to do with well, people knowing the small the, kid? The, the sickle cell. Well, I've always been a small kid. Is that because this, of the disease? So the disease also. So you also had to deal with that psychological. Oh, uh, well, that's a physical aspect of right. it, and a psychological right. aspect of it. Right. Wow. So, so is it? Is it? Can I say that people that have sickle cell? Is it a known fact that they don't? Well, they only gain a certain amount of weight or yeah wow in most in most cases you even even those that just have the trait in most cases a lot of them are slim mm. uh, they we're slim people and okay it's because a lot of times we're we suffer from fatigue we, we suffer from uh, like you you you're consistently tired mm. you, you're, you're weak I was going to ask um, some of that, that along the way. So those are some of the physical things that you that you deal with. Is it daily? On a day to day, yeah. Dang. It never changes. It's always the same. And that's from the time you're born, from a little kid, on, from a baby on up. Uh, of course, you don't see those symptoms and things in babies when they're first born, but you sometimes you might wonder like why did my why is my child learning slow? Um, why are they picking up things slower than the average kid? You know why why they're not using the bathroom when they need to use the bathroom? So that um, affects so now is that is that something that you're saying from experience from what you're hearing from your family from or from people, right? From is it something that's disease. known? With the disease, yeah, these are symptoms, part of the symptoms. So it affects the brain as well. So it, it, it is that the brain that it affects when yeah. you say because if we're not doing things yeah, as a child, yeah, it's the brain actually. The yeah. brain, your body is compromised. The whole body is compromised. Yeah. You have no, Which is no, all no part of your body. It's just like your your body. Mm -hmm. Everything that you you have grown mm -hmm. and the way you've been structured. Mm -hmm. You know, through the genes of your mother and your father, yeah. you became who you are. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. And um, some people, I mean, you have some people that are, that don't have a disease, of course, and mm -hmm. they born doors. They're born, you know, yeah. just short people. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, uh -huh. You got different reasons for different right. things. Right. However, this is just one of those situations that the average person who inherits this disease mm -hmm. these are the true symptoms and aspects of what you got to deal with or what your child mm -hmm. will have to deal with coming up um, yeah. because they're not normal and, and for people to keep looking especially those that know better uh -huh. like they know that these people are they're sickly where we we have issues, we're not we're not of a normal breed. You understand what I'm saying? So when people understand that and know that, we can like you know, for instance, myself, you know, I I look normal all day long. Right. But unless you have this conversation with me, you don't know exactly. Exactly. You know, you <laughs> so I hope you all caught that. Exactly. I mean, because you don't look like nothing wrong. Exactly. I mean, Those yeah. Those think they know me don't know me. Yeah, because you, 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 you look bad. Because you look, no. I mean, like, if I if I just look at you, I'm not, it's like you just look at him and be like, oh, damn, he's skinny. Right. But you don't think he there's a reason. There may be a reason, right? It's just like right. he's a slim dude, but there's a reason yeah. why he's like slim. Somebody, you might be teasing that fat. Exactly. That you don't know. Fat. Not because they eat a lot. And I was going to go it's there. Just, it's just that their metabolism, everything that they have is You slow. just don't know what somebody's situation it's, is. Their family, their mother, their father, or big mother. Yeah, yeah. Suckers. Yeah, yeah. And it's and not it's not for them, us to um you know and it's not for us to go out and, and make them feel like right. they don't belong. That's right. the whole point. So like right. with, with 
with yours, I mean, like, so you struggle with that, like, so back on the ch child thing, like, so you, you suffer with that as a child. The kids tease you saying stuff about oh, your stature, like, like your, your size and stuff yeah, like that. Oh, man, definitely, definitely. I That's had to fight that. I grew up fighting almost on a daily basis. Because and, just because and, of that, not because you did something to somebody. Yeah, uh, I mean, like when I got in high school, it was different. Yeah. Uh, of course, school, high school, I was, I didn't grow into myself now, so I was who I was. But did but, you grow a tough exterior because of exactly, that? Exactly. Exactly. That's messed up. That's that, that come from from the time you were young, you went yeah first grade when you going in first grade and that that. Just because you walked in class and you might have something they don't have, or whatever the case may be, or like in my case, I just looked different. Mm -hmm. I was a skinny dude compared to everybody else in my class. Mm -hmm. So they felt like other boys that were bigger. They tried you. You know, they would always try me, always, like almost every day. As though, like, I was that kid that they used to try to take my lunch money. Yeah, 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 yeah. They tried to. I noticed was, the word try. <laughs> yeah, but it was sometimes that they did at yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I would come home and cry home. Yeah, eventually you fought like back. Most kids did, you know what I mean? I cry and cry home, let them know, let my mother know that, you know, hey, you know, this person took my lunch money or whatever the case may be. And, and or I got in a fight today and we would get in trouble because. We got in a fight with somebody, but one, I ain't hit him back because I was too scared mm -hmm. or because I felt like I couldn't beat him because I was smaller than them or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I would let, in the beginning, let people yeah. just pick on me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I, you had already, then, and the fact that you had already had, I would like to think that played some part yeah. in it, that you had already had some type of something instilled in you that right. you couldn't right. that you couldn't regard whatever that couldn't well we know but us we, we, you couldn't that I grew, one level i always grew up when i was i always wanted to make mom happy yeah no yeah, matter yeah, what yeah, so yeah, i yeah. never wanted her to be mad with me because i'm at school fights and you know i'm doing something wrong yeah. doing something well, bad i know that you know, <laughs> so like my mother at that time we were like that was like my best friend mm -hmm. You know, um, but at the same time, I had a tough love mother mm -hmm. that would raise us to not run from nothing, you know, stand stand on your own too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and don't be scared of anybody. And you speak your mind when you, you, you have something that you feel you need to speak on, mm -hmm. you know, don't be afraid. However, A lot of years of our lives, it was that fear was already embedded through through my mother mm -hmm. because we feared her. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. was, you know, so um, I, I know I'm kind of going off track just a little bit here, but it, it, all of this just plays a part with people who have and carry diseases like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like um. But in, in some ways, it was good that my mother was a love, a tough love mother. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, it hurt me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as well it, as it, a kid it, coming up. Because uh, of the, the, so it hurt you. Now, let me say this, not to cut you off, but to right. throw a question in. Did it, if you were what we call a typical without sickle cell or right, disease right, right, free, healthy, um, super with, healthy, uh, right, yeah. what they call normal, you know, because I don't, right, but right. Um, <laughs> if you didn't have sickle cell, do you feel that her tough love would have affected you different as opposed to you being a child with sickle cell? So let's say your brother, because you have a brother, right. if, if he was to get so if you were him and you got that same, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not if you were him. He got that same tough love right. and she didn't treat her right. kids different. Right. But do you feel that she should have been a little different with you? Because I, you know, I'm not him, like I'm no, different. Actually, no, no, as an adult now, mm -hmm. I'm glad she did what she did because okay. again, it saved my life. Okay, okay. I'm, here I am, I'm, I've been told from doctors three separate times uh -huh. throughout my life that I was not gonna see the ages that I skated through, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I literally, 
for those that really don't know, do your research. This is where you do your research, especially if you really are interested and need to know more information about this, this topic that we're talking about, which is sickle cell. If you feel that your child may um, be, be suffering uh, from successful it. or, uh, yeah, uh, they, they, it's a possibility they may carry this disease or what have you, or you see symptoms of fatigue in your kids or whatever the case may be. These are the things, these are signs that over I'm this conversation you yeah. should look for to also protect your kids because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, no matter how us as kids may feel our parents are doing the right job for us or not. I mean, of course, this is us speaking now years later as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, but during that time, yeah, she did the right thing. Okay. All right. Because she protected me. Right, she made right, right. sure that I did not get hurt based on what the doctors told her. Exactly. Which is don't let him play rough sports. Right. Don't let him do this. Don't but with the child, Jaquille... Does the, did the child, Jaquille, feel that way? No, of course I don't feel that way. We don't have an understanding. Mm -hmm. Kids don't understand. Right, that. right. No, I get that right. They only, don't. Only thing right. they so, understand is playtime. Exactly. So that's, that's where I'm going back to. So because that child did not understand that is yeah. what I'm getting to. And it's just a question. Like because that child, if you even notice it or even acknowledge that. So yeah. because that child did not understand, we grow up without that understanding because we're kids and then you grow. And as an adult, you start to develop understanding of yeah. why our parents made certain decisions. But in between that understanding and that child, there's a whole lot of shit built up. Right. When you reach that adult stage, did you put that together or is there still some lingering stuff in there? Oh, there's that, always lingering stuff. Right, some lingering because, because it's damage. <laughs> right, that's what I'm getting at, right. At the, at the end of the day, you got damage control. Right, right, right. Um, it's, it's the start of damage control. Okay, okay. Because any any time you told no something. Yeah. Or, uh, like, again, in my case, you know, you go home and you're crying and you, you don't understand why Every day, somebody want to keep picking on me. Why you right. want to? Why somebody keep bullying me or trying to hurt me for for what reason? I didn't do no. I don't. Not, I'm not doing nothing to them. Yeah. Why they dislike me? Why they hate me? You know, I hate the fact I'm skinny. I hate. Listen the fact to this that, right here. Yeah. Because this is important. I mean, kids do this stuff, and and it's 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 sickening to me. But it starts with us as parents to teach our kids that that shit is not right. Yeah, you know, and right. we can't control what our kids do when they step away from us. But if you instill that in your children not to treat people that way, then it just they typically most of the time they won't do it because right. they're taught that by their parents. They're right. they're taught. These things are talked about. Well, I'm sorry. Well, this is the thing that people don't understand, too, is. Um, OK. We have that that saying, of course, is that, you know, I can't watch everything my child is going to go through <laughs> yeah. because guess what? You got to work. Right. You got to do your job. And yep. then you got to also come home and you got to be a parent right. at home and right. so forth and so on. But that time you're not around with your kid, guess what? They're living another life. So just as well as you're living a double life or whatever amount of <laughs> lives you're living throughout uh -huh. your day, uh -huh. your child is doing the mm -hmm. same because mm -hmm. you, you're, they're living a life at school mm -hmm. then they're living a life with Whoever is watching them in between up that. until the time that they go from school to the time they get to their parent. Right. And then their relationship with their parent. Right. So they got two diff three different lives as well. Uh -huh, mm -hmm, uh -huh, uh -huh. And they don't understand that they uh -huh, had these uh -huh. lives. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't understand yeah, or because, think about it sometimes. Well, they what do we because really doing. every adult that, that that child interacts with, that child takes a piece of that adult with right. them. You and I just had a conversation about watching the adults in our life and how we as children pick pieces of that adult and we become that. And right. some of those things that the adults do, that... Um, that parents have around their kids are not positive adults. And those kids are picking up some of those traits. And when they're not around you, they're using those things. And so you got to you gotta be careful not, about who you have your kids to be around. There at that time to yeah. be able to tell them that you just saw, that was that's wrong. not right. Or that's not right. Or that's 
that's how you support. That's why mom or dad is always getting on you. Cause see how good that kid did this or did that. These are the things they're not there for that. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're not there. Your kid is in another space, mm -hmm. learning new things or other things mm -hmm. and dealing with other personalities. But that's why I feel like it's very important. Kids. But that's why I feel like it's very important for us as parents to truly, you know, I know that we're tired. We work. I work, you know, but I don't care how tired you are. It doesn't matter. You decided to bring a child into the world. You don't get to go party when you want. You don't get to do things that you want to do until that child is taken care of. And that does not mean just turning the TV on or letting that child just get on their phone nowadays or their, yeah. their iPad or whatever and raise their self. You got to. So when they are in the um, in the uh, presence of these adults that aren't you, right. they have a foundation to know, you know what? That shit ain't right. Yeah. My parents, they're not teaching me that. And my parents are parents because there's a difference and you can be an adult in the home and we've talked about that before or you can be a parent and they're, they're two different things yeah. and when your child has that foundation i'm not saying they don't stray because they're humans and they're kids right. we adults stray but they have a foundation and typically they don't go out and do the stuff right that the kids like you were saying teasing somebody because if anything they're the kids that's telling the other kids to stop right somebody yeah, gotta be cases, the one in a lot of cases yeah yeah and, man and you'd be surprised like especially some of these little little girls mm -hmm. that and they always say this you know women <laughs> are little they grow a little bit quicker yeah, a little yeah. bit smarter than us dudes sometimes well, what can I say? you know <laughs> <laughs> and and a lot of times that starts from when we were kids, I, yeah. I remember being in school and getting ready to get in a fight and a girl beside me is taking, take, trying to take up for me, you know what I mean? By saying like, nah, leave him alone. Why y'all keep picking on him? Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. She don't know no better herself, no, but she right. knows enough to be right. able to tell that other kid, right. nah, don't, don't do that. Why yeah. are you doing that to him? Right. Right. You know I think I mean? that we, you know, we all have yeah. emotions. Because yeah. we all are human, but yeah. I think that women typically are just like we, we know nurturers. Yeah. I mean, yes. we we yeah. carry the babies, right. we do this. So that's, by nature, that's... you know, a ch yeah. uh, it would be a girl yeah. that would probably jump in and say, "Hey, that's not right." Stop. I'm being told all the time <laughs> why I always say <laughs> us men the difference between <laughs> men and women. He this does. is this is why I speak in terms of as a man mm -hmm. or as a woman. I relate to that a lot, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I do because of moments like this. Yeah, it's actually this is the way God and how you knew you knew mm -hmm. uh, baby boomers, I guess. I don't know what they are. They are millennium, millennials. Well, I guess. Oh, oh, this is cancel culture. I don't right. know what the heck it is, you know, man. Well, but we're here. Right. Whoever we are, we're here. Yeah. So it's <laughs> I ain't always going yet. They, you know they. They, we say, well, you know, why are you always separating the, the two between yeah. men and women? The thing of it is, is the universe or whatever you want to believe in. With some stuff. God, me, I believe in God, so I'm going right. to say God. That's yeah. my, that's who I, that's my go-to guy. <laughs> that's my father. That's my homie. That's my everything. And so, and I am, and I do claim Christian. So therefore, I, that's my father. That's who got me through my most roughest and most vulnerable times in life where dealing with all of these things that we're talking about here at the table today that's what got me through all these years because where i felt i couldn't go to my family or go to my mother or go to school people in school or adults in school because i didn't want to get in trouble or things of that nature um you know, um, so you didn't is, feel like you could go to even because I didn't mean to cut you off. I just noticed you said something real quick right, that just correct. caught me. You didn't even feel like you could go to the teachers and talk yeah, to nobody. I couldn't go to nobody. I, I mean, about certain things, yeah. you know, that I might wanted to tell somebody right. or I don't know. It's this is something I. It's a big deal. These, these are the kind of conversations. I enjoy these conversations because it puts me in space of other people who 
who I've had conversations with mm -hmm. and give them understanding on some of, even some of their own situations. Mm -hmm. But um, where I was going with it is, is simply is simply this. Um, you can, we're, we're all born. I don't care how sick you are, how retarded you are, how slow you are, how fast you are, how we're all born with a natural gift. That natural gift is to naturally, from the time you are born, how to take care of yourself, how to take care of other people. Mm. It's just enforced when we have parents that are in our lives and they are trying to keep us on the right path or we're in school and our teachers are keeping us in line, you know, teaching us leadership. We got a bathroom aid, and all of you guys got to go in the bathroom. You got five minutes to go mm -hmm. in the bathroom, wash your hands, and come mm -hmm. on out. You learning this all from first grade. You just you're still fresh. Mm -hmm. You just literally almost come out the womb five mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. six years mm -hmm. ago, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and and now you're you're off on your own, mm -hmm. learning what it is to be a part of society, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We we don't have these conversations, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have these, these in-depth conversations right. as to what your child is actually experiencing, where we, mm -hmm. we thinking, oh, that's just my child. We get up every day, we make sure we go to school, yeah. and this is that's that's just how they are. That's, this is life, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But you're not understanding how your child is perceiving and seeing what it is they're going through, you got to cons consistently check and talk to them and ask them questions like, you okay? Are you okay? Oh, If absolutely. you're not okay, you need to let me know. Talk to me. Talk to dad. Talk to mom. You, you know what I mean? Right, because you right. if you're not doing that and they not understanding that they can come to you and say certain things that they may be afraid to tell you, you need to make sure that they have that understanding so that they can when they having trouble times in school, they're not hiding it from you. Or they, you know, if they feel like they don't want to be a tattletale or a snitch or whatever the case may be. We, we're all taught that, but if you don't go and tell nobody, you definitely come and tell your parents. I, but, hey, I teach you, my kids to be a tattletale. You don't tell nobody else. Man, you come tell your parents. Yo, my, me and my wife teach you. you me and, it's, yo, we teach, we teach the girls to be tattletales when it come to us. I, we don't right. give a hell tattletale my ass. Right. That's gonna, that can get you hurt. You yeah. know, that bullshit right there. You know, um, you know, I fuck that code shit and all that. I, I, I'm not on the streets. I, you know, yeah. so I can't really, you know, hey. Yeah. I just want my kids safe. That's what I care about, my family and my kids. But so I heard you say, you know, as far as um, not being able to talk to anybody when you were talking about the kids being able to go to their parents and talk to them. So with you saying that, does that mean that you did not feel that you could go to your mother in a vulnerable yeah. way and yeah. tell her, my kids are teasing right. me? You know, did you let her know? <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. Excuse me. Yeah, and yeah, it definitely was times where I felt like I couldn't talk to my mother. Um, like I said, I had a tough love mother, so um, you know, coming up, in my, <coughs> in my in my younger years, and um, having a relationship with my mother, I felt like we were like the best of friends. Mm from for so many years up to a certain amount of years and then um and then I just felt like at some point in time that you know I just felt like um other things for a better choice of words became mm. more important okay in okay. her life to okay. where I wasn't getting that same attention right Right. And I felt like I couldn't talk, come to her and talk to her, even though she would tell her, mm -hmm. tell us all the time. We could come and talk to her at any time we wanted to about things that bothered us. Mm -hmm. um, and when it came to things, you know, say like getting picked on in school and stuff like that. In my earlier years, I 
you know, I was able to go on her and tell her things that I, mm -hmm. I thought was important for her to know. Mm -hmm. What are earlier um, years to you? When you say earlier years, I say, like I say, first first grade, mm -hmm. second grade. You know, um, those are my my earlier school years. So third, fourth. I mean, you could include them. I'm just saying, I ain't yeah. asking you to pinpoint, but at what Third point? Four or five hours, that's when it was getting a little more tougher. Wow. Like, basically, where I, I I felt like at certain points. That's a real uh, pivotal point in a child's life. Well, I, I would have to say probably, maybe even, yeah, I would say about. Still in fourth, elementary fifth, school, fourth, though. Fifth year. Right, fourth, in elementary grade, school, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's. Fourth, fifth grade, I think that's where I felt like relationships was changing. So did it make you withdraw? And I, I, did it make you withdraw? So like, so like to lose that best friend, like the way you put her in terms, to lose that best friend slash mother, you know what I'm saying? That's deep. Right. Not lose, but you know what I mean. Because I, I know you ain't loser, but you know what I mean. To lose right. that bond that, that you feel like, yeah, that connection. Right. To lose that, how did that make you feel towards her because I'm as a child you know that you didn't sever it so at some point you had to feel like she severed it like push you away yeah well is that how it, it felt so much pushed us away I no felt you like, well for me I didn't feel like she she pushed me away okay it was just more so it wasn't the same as it was years prior so what was different me. if she didn't push you it's, away it's, well it's like we I hung with her all the time. Uh -huh. I think it was only one year out of my life that I lived without her uh -huh. up until I turned 16. Uh -huh. But um, prior to that, I would have to say um, all of my early years, from what I can remember, kindergarten uh -huh. on up, maybe probably second, third grade. Uh, Your road dog. Had like, yeah, he was a road dog. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, maybe even up to up to fifth grade, I want to mm -hmm. say. But um, it seemed like after that, mm -hmm. um, that's where things kind of changed. So you weren't number not you. You know that the, all y'all. I'm not talking about the kids. I'm just talking about you. So not your sister and brother, yeah. just you because I'm just focused on you. So when I say number one, I don't. I'm not talking about them. You didn't feel like you were number one anymore. Right. And so right. other things came into play, and right. it's like, okay, I'll get to you right. when I get to you. So to speak. Right. Okay, you get and in line that's, that's now. That's where we feel like, that's where I feel like the tough love mother came. Why do, why do you feel like that's tough love? Uh, to say, for no, you I to say be, that's where I think tough love, that's where the tough love mother came. Right. But, became, started. Right. Like around that fifth, fifth, sixth grade. And I have mm -hmm. to say because more so she was more... We became I think I get more you where we that. had to become okay. more responsible. I got you. I got you. Right, right, right. And I got me you. being the oldest. You I know. got you. Because I didn't understand what you mean. That made her be... So you're talking right. about because the responsibility, like you right, just said, right. came on. And so she being a single I mother, she, you know, she go to school all day, go to work all day, then she come home. So she, got to deal her with situation us. changed too. Yeah. Well, she's always been a, a single mother. Right. Um, but well, you're old we, enough. Let me take that back because there's been moments she she she's married twice, uh -huh. um, and that was to my father and my brother's father, mm -hmm. and um, and so you know I guess she's always she's always been a spiritual woman. She's always believed in dealing with one relationship at a time, and it just so happened she was just one of them. That back in her day, you would, they probably she probably was judged as being promiscuous, but you know at that time it was just she was looking for the right guy to just be there for her her and her kids, right? Because she right. was doing it by herself, absolutely. And of course she got to she, she got still wanted love. She wanted she was tired or she yeah. was getting tired, so. Uh, she Long needed story help. short, yeah, but yeah, basically, and love. Basically, I, mean, I, I was her helpmate. Okay. So, you know, so I, all you the know, pressure, at a young age, at such a young some age, I, yeah, I was helping her, so to speak, raise my brother and my sister. So, so 
I had to become more responsible and do more responsible things at around the house and whatnot, you know, chores and making sure my brother and sister was doing what they supposed to do and what and then I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do and Yeah, that's you know, a lot of responsibility. Where, right. Uh -huh. at, and at the fact that during this time, because us, you know, well, in my family, so I, I can only use uh -huh. what I knew from my perspective growing up. Now it's different, but Growing up, when we grew, grew up, um, I guess most black families, you know, we didn't do therapy. We we did things based off of what our grandmother and great grandmother and forefathers did. Right. And that's the way we did things, you know, um, and that tough love and those things. Not to say tough love is not needed in certain situations, right. but we grew up a tough people because of what we've been through. So as we know, generation after generation, that toughness has been carried down throughout us. Right. A sort of aggression, if you will, that some people uh, misconstrue it as. Mm -hmm. We are aggressive people, but it's not aggressive like animals. Right. You know, um, mm -hmm. but y'all, you know, we were made to be that way. Excuse me. I, I don't want to go well, off like that. But anyway. But in some cases, it's, it's good. It's very in good in some, some cases. In some, in some cases, it's bad. It just yeah. depends on... Your child, and it depends on how your child developed. And, and, and the psychological things. aspect, that the psychological damage that if we don't watch, that it could do. Mm -hmm. um, that tough love. And what, I, and what I was getting at with you is, with you having to take on that, um, that um, responsibility at that age, what... Um, with you having to take on that responsibility at that age, what, how did that affect you from a psychological standpoint? Because you were already dealing with the the physical stuff that you were going through, being the limitations uh, that yeah, you had, so, so. and you had to be, you know, the big brother per se of the right. house. Right. You know, yeah. So how did that? Like, how did that? And you would get in trouble. You know, if you didn't do right, but you're still dealing with this. So that's a lot, you know, mentally to deal with. How did that, like, how did that make you feel, if you can remember back then? Um, again, um, you know, it's, like I said, go back to God and the universe giving mm -hmm. you these natural abilities to know okay. right from wrong okay. and things of that nature, mm -hmm. along with what mom teach you and all of that kind yeah. of stuff. Like when you're a kid, you, when you're, a, uh, yeah, when you're a kid, it's, it's like, you, you know better. Yeah. Kids are smart. Yes, they we, are. We, you know, we tend to forget how it was when we were kids and right. we do tell, we 40 and 50 years old now mm -hmm. and still remember these things right. like when we were five and six. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's a natural ability. That's something that God has instilled in us naturally. Right. To where even in your most slowest of the slowest person, mm -hmm. they can remember one of their worst times. Uh-huh. And, and they can remember time. their one of their best times that made them the most happiest. You ever. Right, 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 right. Naturally, right? Right. So so with that being said, as a kid coming up. Based on what mom is teaching you and grandma is teaching you, auntie mm -hmm. is teaching you, uncles and aunt, uh, uh, uncles and grandfathers is mm -hmm. teaching us, mm -hmm. and you know these people. Some of these people ain't in your life, but maybe a, a few times. Right. But they carry something within them that rubbed off, or that you knew you was a part of, and right. you was like, "Dang, I'm happy that I'm a part of this." Right. Dad, this is my family. Right. Like, that's my uncle. Right, 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 right. Man, I like right. him, man. Right, right, right. You, you, you be amazed. You yeah, be looking yeah. at him because he a G. You yeah, like, exactly. Man, he's smelling good. Right, right, driving right. the best looking cars. Right, and right. Your granddad, he doing his thing still. Yeah. And, you know, mm. grandma and that, they in there with all of the women. And they uh -huh. cooking and tying up the kitchen. Right, right. You feel me? Mm. And it's like, as a kid coming up, those are good times. Those mm. are times that you hold on to mm. and remember. Mm. I don't care how slow you are, mm -hmm. how fast yeah. you. That's that, that what I say. You know, you know. Um, so, and every child develops differently. Mm -hmm. So, what may have affected me, or made me 
strong mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. it might have affected somebody else differently. Mm -hmm. It would, could probably make them very weak, mm -hmm. you know, to the point where, um, like, like, prime example, you take a rich person, right? Mm -hmm. So you got a rich person who he's born in the money. Mm -hmm. All his life, all he knew was money. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in his life, he could be 21, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. First time in his life, he go to the bank. Mm -hmm. He want to buy something. He want to buy this car that he just, he, he used to go into any lot he want to and just get what he want. Mm -hmm. Like it's a toy store. Like, mm -hmm. shit, I, these are my toys. Mm -hmm. I own these. Mm -hmm. And he, literally, he do. He rich. Mm -hmm. He can buy anything you want, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one of those things that he crash mm -hmm. if he can't pay one light bill. Mm -hmm. If he was to ever run across a situation where he can't pay a light bill, he's going to crack up. Because mm -hmm. he's not used to not mm -hmm. being able to take care of himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like some people look at things as being OCD, and, mm -hmm. but some people just don't know no better. Mm -hmm. And it scares them, it frightens mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So like that in that example, mm -hmm. a rich person, they crack up. Mm -hmm. They get nervous like the, the end of the world is coming. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have no understanding. Mm -hmm. And for us, we looking at them like, are you, are you serious? Mm -hmm. you, fuck, you, you crazy, bro. Something mm -hmm. wrong with you for real. You, you got some issues. Mm -hmm. That's how we feel mm -hmm. because we know you got to be built stronger than that, right? Mm -hmm. It's common mm -hmm. sense for us. Mm -hmm. But he don't know no better. I've been like him. You know? I've I, been I, like him. I, 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 I have you. cracked. Yeah. I have cracked because, you know, I got witnesses. Yeah. Somebody taught me not to be like that. Yeah. You know, I literally cracked. But, you know, snapping, snapping back to... To that, like, to your to your uh, upbringing, when you when they, um, how did so when I just heard you say something when you were talking earlier, when you were just speaking, you were talking about um, your uncles, your you went through everybody, correct, except dad, correct. Where was dad? Because with you struggling with all that you were struggling with mentally, you I have not heard you mention him. So where was he? Because he wasn't there. Okay. <laughs> it's just simple. <laughs> All right. Hey, man. I know was, how that is, man. I know man, how it was is. A, there was a couple times I've met him. Okay. Okay. My mother didn't keep me separate from him. Like, right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. She was trying to keep him from right. him. Right. It was his doing. I mean, but, yeah, it was, keeping her yeah. no beating around the bush. <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, truly is. I really know how it is. Like, uh -huh. you know, the parent is supposed to be the one to pursue the child. There are no if ands, or buts about it. I don't want to hear no parent saying, well, he didn't call me, or she didn't find me, or I couldn't find her. A parent, yeah. a dad, or a mother does whatever it is takes. I mean, they go from here to the end of the world for theirs to yeah. find them and to be in their life. Right. So there are no ifs, ands, or buts. Any parent that's not in their kid's life, it's because you didn't you want to, to be there. Period. Yeah. No beating around the bush. No, I'm not, well, you got, you, he wasn't there. No, because you got some butthole mothers out here. I don't care. Yeah, but I don't you, care. I'm you go to court and you get rights. You do whatever it takes. You we do. not even going to go and there. You can. He was, we, I don't care I, about butthole. But no, but this is what I'm saying. I, I, I'm, I, I, we I'm know there are. On that subject just uh, a little bit. We already know there are butthole mothers out there. Yeah, because. But because, I don't care. Yeah, it's, it's some fathers who really, really want to be in their No, I don't life. care. I don't care. And you they go do to everything court. They can. I don't know they, they don't. They do everything. Yes, then they do. you then then they would be in their kids' lives. Period. Uh, I, I have no I don't wanna I'm not giving nobody see I've seen where the that's why my platform stayed. is no beating them on the bush than that parent, then that dad probably didn't have a job. Probably wasn't doing the necessary things that a man I've seen some parents do. that do everything. They you know, work, it they ain't come too home, many. They call okay, for their kids. Okay, then if they there are those, if there are those that that's out there, 
then okay, I can't. Oh, man, you I gotta can't. understand, this is a big it's world. It's a big world, a but 99% of the things. time, 99% of the time, those people that, that say that right there, that you, they have an excuse. There's mm -hmm. an excuse. Nah, you, I, that's you my opinion. Hear, you, we gonna, when I was just talking a minute we ago, gonna, we're going to leave that opinion. Hear, you, you haven't heard, you didn't hear me fully as to what I was saying. No, no, no. When I okay, you didn't well, hear me from the beginning of what I was saying to the end of what I was saying, but there. Well, I don't need to hear that as far as that topic, as far as a parent being in a child's life. That don't have well, nothing I mean, to do with a parent. That yeah, broad topic, I but do, like you, you said, that, but like you said, we gonna agree to disagree if we can say that because you feel another way. So hey, we can I'm come a, back. I'm a part of that. That can be I a topic. Come from that. Hey, yo, we can. <laughs> Y'all want hey, you know what, y'all? Tell me if y'all want to hear that. If y'all want us to come back and discuss that, hey, comment on this and let us know because I'm ready for that one. That's I will right. tackle any parent that want to talk to me about that. All right, let's That's go. A man. So yeah, it's a good, a good ass subject. subject. All right, so right. so back to that. So so dad was not there. Nah, he wasn't there. Now, him. I don't care what kind of excuses he tried to come up with. <laughs> he fall in that category that I'm talking about. He, he fall in her okay. category. Right. He's not okay. one of them. I know yeah. about those type right there. Trust yeah. me, man. I, I, I know mean, even after, firsthand. Even after confronting, <laughs> confronting him as an adult, uh -huh. you know, and really talk heart to heart yeah. with him and whatnot. We literally got into it physically, Damn. because all because you know it it was I try not <coughs> excuse me I try not to hurt far as I I try not to allow myself to have one situation. Uh, dictate who I am mm -hmm. or what I come from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, like, when you think about, like, like my father, for instance, um, when approaching him because of the fact that he was not there mm -hmm. and I just felt like if he was there, you know, uh, as a, a present father in my life, it was a lot of things. I think, I think, even though mom, mom is that go-to, we go to her mm -hmm. for the hug and the kiss yeah. and that the third one. Uh -huh. Where she was tough at, you know, sometimes you wonder how your dad, your dad would have been there to protect you. You know what I'm saying? And to make sure that, you know, people would not, you know, pick on a their son or they don't. Oh, I know. Trust me. I, I know you, about you, wishing about your dad. Yeah, we the protectors. We supposed yeah, to protect. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know I mean? Yep, and yep. I, I felt like I missed that part of I my know. life. You I know, can I imagine. didn't have that protection. In your situation, but yeah. I know firsthand how it feels, though. Yeah. So I definitely get you on that, man. So that's where, like, all of the street fighting came in there. Yeah. And I had to learn how to... You know, I had to learn how to fend for myself. And you had to learn how to be a man. Right. You know, your mother, that was you know, the only she's, way a, she knew she's, a, she's a woman, you know, so we, we can only do so much. You know, right. I do believe, you know, even me being gay and, and you know, more, um, you know, on the masculine side, you know, with my daughters. And, I'm, and of course, everybody that knows I'm married to my wife and we have two girls. But I, I'm, they have a godfather who's right. very active in their life as a man. I mean, he's there for that daddy role. You know, we decided to do that because I know, see, I happen to be, you know, I just know that I'm not a man. Right. And there's certain things that I'm, I can do everything I can do, right. you know, right. um, but I, I want them to have that in our situation. And I, you know, eat to each his own. Right. That's just our situation. Right. So I do believe that, you know, that's important to have that. Um, and so for, you know, your mother can only do. For so, for much. so much. You know, and so for him not to have been there and, and the stepdad's. If they did not really take in, because not all stepdads take an interest in the child. Right. They're there. They're nice. They're cool, but they're not really there to be a parent to you. Right. You know, they're right. they're there to be a husband right. to your mother. Right. And you're you're here, and right. I'm gonna be nice to you. I'm cool with you. You know, um, you needed that parent 
right. as a man. Because not only as a man, but then you're going through something else too. You know, a, 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 you know, you're dealing with sickle cell. So that's that. Like I said, I, I until I, you know, got known, met you, right. I really didn't really know much about no. It. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't know yeah, too much a, about it's that. It's a heavy. It's a pretty heavy disease. And, and I see your struggles. Right. So you know, there's some things I still don't understand where I may be like, damn, you know, Jaquil may not come out or don't get up. But yeah. there's a reason for that. That's not for me to, you know, judge or whatever. Because right. I don't know what you're going through because your body is different than mine. Right. You know, and like, so how does that? How does that? Tell me some of the. Um, does it get worse as you've gotten older? Has it gotten because you know our bodies change the physical you know ness of our bodies. I mean, at times I've almost passed away and died from it, but it's you know. Like I say, it's um, it's it's something that. Well, I don't care what kind of pain you go through. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can never outgrow it. You can never say, you know, I'm used to it. You know, somebody. I mean, you, you hear people say that a lot, and a lot of times, most people that say that is because they 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 don't want to bother you or don't want to bother somebody else about their situation. Right. So forth and so on, but. But for the most part, there is no one person that could get used to a certain amount of pain. Right. That you get on a regular basis. Right. Um, sometimes it's different in different places. And sometimes it's just that same old thing hitting you on from a day-to-day to day-to-day -to -day basis. And it don't change. So tell me some of those so things. every day is mostly a struggle day. It's just mm. some days are just better than others. So what are some of the daily things that you go through? Mostly, Physically. Mostly is pain. That point blank, just that simple pain. Yeah. Wherever it may be, yeah. if there's some sort of pain. Right. Are you on, I'm assuming, you're on medications. Right. Every day you got to take right. medicine. I have about, I was taking like about 17 different pills for different things that was going on. Um, but currently, it's probably about, probably about 10, 10, 9, 10 different meds, meds that I have to take on a daily. Um, and it's primarily not to take away the pain. It's more so to just allow us to be able to deal with it, Damn. you know, cope with it a little bit better than what it would be with not having no meds. Because believe me, if you have dealing with what I have to deal with, and it's, now it's not due to just one disease, it's due to two right. diseases. Right, I was going to, as I mentioned, when we so, initially started, if you heard me mention sarcoidosis as well, um, I'm I'm um I'm probably going to post this video because they're going to be so long. So what I'm going to do, what I want y'all to do, you'll come back and see the second video about the sarcoidosis because because sickle cell itself took up so much time because you know, I know a lot of us some of y'all probably never heard of it. And there's a lot the sickle cell entails and the psychological aspect of it aspect of it and then the physical um, pain that he has to deal with and the, you know, the physical aspect of the sickle cell. So I kind of wanted to stay with that on this video and then um, our conversation will continue and I'll show you, you know, or you all will see the video um, in reference to the sarcoidosis at, a, at another time. I know y'all sure, want to see sure. it, but you got to come back. You just got to sure, come back. Sure. You know? Keep watching me. Keep watching me. Support I me. I y'all the ice on what it's all about. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's um, right. It's real. It's Real shit is something that we all, you know, at some point or another, like, if your goal is just to be the best that you could be as a per and and leave your your remembrance behind or your legacy behind, you know, um, that's the biggest and the most important thing that we all have to, at some point, surface and and surface within ourselves 
and find out like what is it that you really how do you want people to remember you by when when you're when they uh uh when you leave here how how do you want people to remember you by you know were you were you that knucklehead or was you, were you that cat that you know you you were smooth with yours and you you just tried to take care of you and yours you know from your kids to your mother to to your family you know it's, all of these things is what we wake up for every day to try to strive to be a better person a better person for and that no matter that's whether you have an ailment or not and uh in today's I, I guess I would leave you with this and this is just to say in today's in today's world we just not promised tomorrow and your family at any given moment could lose you and you just got to understand that it's, it's always great to just let your family know how much you love them and you know y'all stick behind each other as much as possible and talk talk to each other learn learn uh, learn from each other and push forward for that for that that star that's right <laughs> day, I mean, we all you know we yeah. all every day i always say every day i wake up i get a chance to be a better person you know, it don't. It doesn't mean that I get that those wrongs that I made are wiped away. But I just I get another day to be better, and that, that's all I try to do. You know, Jaquil is to me to me, and I I told him this before. It's nothing new. I always tell him him, and I have a cousin, a younger cousin of mine. Um, they are two uh, to me physically are two of the strongest men that I know. Because I don't deal with, you know, those struggles daily. My cousin also has an ailment that he deals with. I would love for him to come sit down and talk with you all. And I'm thankful that, that Jaquil is sitting down and sharing his sto story with me. Because I think it's very important that we know. You know, um, every, everybody has a story. We don't know. Like he said, you don't know until you know. And now you're hearing it from his mouth. His mouth to know his daily struggles are what he actually goes through dealing with sickle cell. And um, I think he's a strong ass damn man. <laughs> that point blank. Because I don't know if I could deal with that. Appreciate I see you. this Appreciate man, you. I always tell him he stays positive and he always smiling. You know, no matter what he's going through. Yeah. So, you, you know, he, he's strong as hell to me. So, y'all will see more of him. Enjoy it. Each day you're, you're able to breathe, wake up and breathe and live it. Enjoy it. As much as possible. That's what's up. Every day. That's what's up. That's what's Very up. Important. Hey, I love yeah. the world, man. I love the world. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time.